what we have seen in uh, this chapter and in the previous chapter on rank retrieval was that our queries are free text queries. It's just a set of terms typed into the search box, which is pretty common on web search engines. Now, we have so far not looked at positional indexes in, 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 in these two chapters, right? We have only looked at non-positional indexes. But if you think about it, if I type in a set of four terms, you know, for example, I type in a, a, a term like uh, to be or not to be, okay, or uh, the name of a, uh, of a song, for example, consisting of four or five words. One way to do that is to phrase it as a phrase query with, you know, double quotes on both sides of the query. But even without the double quotes, if most people don't use phrase queries, even without the double quotes, we want documents which contain all the terms close to one another to be given more importance than documents in which the terms may be present but may be scattered all over uh, the document. Okay, so users prefer documents in which the query terms not only occur but occur within close proximity of each other. So suppose we define this number called W which is the smallest window within a document that contains all the query terms. Okay, for example, if you look at a query like strained mercy and if you look at a document which has the sentence the quality of mercy is not strained then the portion that you see in blue mercy is not strained that is the portion which contains both the query terms and it's the smallest such window because mercy is present on the left end and strained is present on the right end so the size of the window is four words we can't have a window smaller than four words which contains both these query terms strained and mercy so W is the size of the smallest window containing all the query terms, right? So clearly the very first word within that window will have to be one of the query terms and the very last term will have to be one of the query terms. Otherwise we could have shortened the window. So the size of this smallest window or the value of W is another score that we may want to incorporate into our scoring function. Okay, we have so far incorporated two different scores into an overall scoring function. One of them was the cosine similarity score and the other was the authority score of a document. Now we are talking about a third signal or a third score contributing to the overall score which is the size of this smallest window W which indicates how close together how bunched together the query terms are in the document. So obviously a smaller value of W will correspond to a higher score and a larger value of W will correspond to a lower score. Right, so how, how do we incorporate this scoring function? Well you can again think of mapping the value of W to some score between 0 and 1 and then adding that score as a third term in that overall score. Okay, for now we'll just think of it in that simple way. Later on, uh, if we get the time, we'll try to see how these independent scores, the cosine similarity score, value of W, the authority score, how these scores can be combined together into an effective overall score using machine learning techniques. Right now we are just doing a simple linear uh, addition of the scores. But we are going to aggregate the scores using automated uh, learning techniques later on. At this stage it's also important to talk about a module in a search engine called a query parser. What a query parser does is it takes the free text query from the user 
and it acts like an interface between you know the user and the search system so it may do something to the query and you know prob you know possibly modify it or uh, you know do something to it before it submits the query to the search system itself in fact it could transform a single query it could convert a single query from a user into a series of queries on the search system so let's take a query like rising interest rates a query parser uh, could 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 do the following it could first take the entire query rising interest rates and run it as and submit it as a phrase query to a positional index okay if the positional index returns k documents we are done otherwise what the query parser will do is it will try to find more documents that match the query in some way so if the results of the phrase query were not sufficient it could take the query rising interest rates and instead of submitting it as a phrase query which it already did it will it could split it into two queries rising interest which is an independent phrase query interest rates which is another phrase query and then take the and or you know maybe take the or it, it all depends on how you build the query parser but whether you take an and or whether you take an or it's clear that the number of documents that you will get now will be more than the number of documents you were getting when you had just a single phrase query rising interest rates now if you still end up with less than k documents then it could take the query rising interest rates and submit it to a different index okay it could submit it to a different index in the back uh, in the back end which is now going to run it as a vector space query okay so this index will implement you know something like term at a time scoring maybe with a few optimizations of the kind we've seen because now we don't have a constraint that all three terms have to be present or two of them have to be present well maybe we could add those optimizations in but when doing vector space scoring if any of these three terms appear in a document rising interest or rates if either of these three terms appear in a document the score between the query and that document is going to be non negative uh, it's going to be uh, greater than 0 sorry it's going to be zero if none of none of the three terms appear in the document but as long as one of the terms appears in the document the score is going to be non negative and so we are pretty sure to end up with a larger and even larger number of results now and then we could rank these uh, matching documents from all these indexes okay we could combine the results from all these indexes and then rank them by an overall score okay we could take the cosine similarity score from vector space scoring we could take the authority score we could take the query proximity score and then rank them so this is something that a query parser does okay so here's a question for you uh i forgot to ask this question in the previous slide well actually let me complete the next slide then i'll ask this question um i see a rotating circle here are you able, able to hear me can you just confirm that yes sir okay you're able to hear me good you can turn off the microphone so this is a general question i already talked about we have seen that there can be independent scores between uh, queries and documents we have the cosine similarity score we have this query proximity score now uh, how do you combine these different scores together in some search engines actually it's not done like this anymore now in 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 modern search engines but there used to be some search engines in the past where uh, where these scores would be weighted manually okay somebody would would be an expert just in coming up with these uh, weights how much weight do you want to give to a cosine score maybe 30% how much score do you want to give to the query proximity score maybe 40% and 
and how much score do you want to give to the authority score maybe 30 percent so like that people who are familiar uh, with the corpus who would be familiar with the applications the needs of the user and so on they could tweak around these weights in such a way that the results are uh, relevant to the user or or or, or uh, the results work well for that particular set of parameters but what's more common now is to come up with these weights automatically using machine learning techniques and that's something we'll discuss in a future uh, chapter uh, the thing to mention is maybe you know you could think of applications where you, these weights would be expert tuned even now but you can expect these applications to not be web search engines but they could be something like enterprise level search or uh, you know scenarios where these weights won't need to change much with time okay where you have a relatively static document corpus where the needs of the user are pretty well understood and are stable so that the weights that experts come up with can at least remain stable over time uh, I just want to go back and talk about or maybe ask you how you would calculate the size of this window W assuming that you have a positional index okay clearly you need a positional index here right if you just work with a bag of words model you can't calculate what this window size W is going to be because you need the positions of the words in the documents in order to determine what is the smallest window that can contain all, all these terms of the query so can you um, recall what you learned in chapter 2 and maybe tweak that postings intersection that you learned there to explain how you would calculate the value of W So, yeah. Uh, so, um, we could like uh, for every. Hello. Store. Hello. Yeah. For every. Uh, for every word in the query, uh, or every uh, term in the for every word in the query, which is mm -hmm. present in the document, we would we could store like those positions and uh, then go through those positions to. Uh, select the smallest uh, interval where uh, all of them are uh, all of them are present take the smallest uh, interval yeah so you would need to maintain what the smallest interval is because as you are doing the pointer walk through notice that you would now now have two different kinds of uh, merges to perform right you would have one merge to perform over the doc IDs in the postings list but what's relevant here is the second level merge that you would do once you detect that let's say there are four terms in the query and once you've detected that all four of those terms are present in a document you would then enter the positional postings for that document and start walking through the post the positional postings indicating the positions where the the, the terms are appearing within that document and then you would do your pointer walkthrough in such a way that the distance between the four pointers is sort of kept uh, um, not minimum but close to one another and you could keep maintaining what is the tentative minimum distance between uh, the earliest position and the latest position that you're looking at currently and then you know do something over there to figure out what the actual minimum value is and that's how you would do it. I mean this is roughly how you would do it. I'll leave the details to you but if you remember what you did in chapter 2 you can probably work out the details yourself.